Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I see life as a journey. I don't know where it's going to end yet, but I know where it started. It began 21 years ago in the nestle of the highest mountain in Africa, that's Mount Kilimanjaro. I was born in a small village known as Kimana. And I'm only 21 years old, as you have heard before. So I was given my beautiful name, that's Nice Nailante Lengete, and I know most of you are having difficulties in remembering my names. So just call me Miss Kilimanjaro. <laughs> <laughs> I want every girl in Kenya to become the woman of a dream. I would love to stay in a place whereby women or girls can speak freely without being judged. And with that, uh, uh, I mean, we like women first being seen as human beings, and then they are now seen as women. I made the impossible possible. That's to, by doing two things. That, uh, that's talking to men, which is not allowed in our community, and also changing uh, female genital cutting to alternative rite of passage. Uh, female genital cutting is there in our place. As you know, uh, when I was growing up, I, uh, I was tired of seeing some of my girlfriends dying when they bleed too much. Others are having difficulties when they are giving birth, and others are called cowards. I was tired of that, and I want to make change in Kenya. It began 21 years ago, the youngest of three. Mm, my father was called Paul. He was a tall, handsome, and he was a, a strong Maasai man. My mother also was called Alice. She was black, dark, with long hairs. I always remember her for two things. One being she was too generous and also the love she had for us. It began 21 years ago. Uh, I'm sorry, for you to know me well, I, uh, that's why I had to tell you about my, my family a little bit for you to understand me. Uh, my father had two wives, he was a polygamist, my mother being one of them. And my parents were raped away in 2006 in 1997 and 1998, and we were left orphans. Our secure home was no more home, moving from one family to another, finding life being difficult. Hard to believe not belonging to any family turned up to be a blessing to us. Escaping two of my, uh, two of my painful things in life, that's forceful marriage and female genital cutting. My sister, for the first time, we escaped with my sister at 4 a.m. in the morning, because that's now the time they do the cut. Uh, but for the second time, when we went back home, we were beaten and, pro and we promised not to do it again. So the other time, I managed to escape alone, but my sister was not lucky. And then after that, I went to my, after that, I went to my, my grandfather's place, and I told him, they, uh, to tell my uncles they should respect my wish. And then I told them I'm going to, rep to report them to the government. And now my grandfather recognized my, recognized my determination, and they respected my wish. Tough and up through what we undergone through, we toughened up and we knew that we could make it in life. After 10 years, we moved to our home with our, bro our elder brother, who was the one who was taking care of me and my sister. A great opening came up in 2008, where I was taken for a training with AMREF, a peer education training by the program, with a program called Nomadic Youth and Productive Health. And now it was like a change to me, because uh, I, I learned so many things on life, life risks, and also things in female genital cutting, early marriages, and I was happy, because when I was out, at least I could speak to my people. And then after the training, I saw that there is a need for young people to be informed. I had one question that kept on bothering me, that is, how could I help my community? I had to mobilize my community, mothers, girls, elders, and morans. 
because change must come from within the communities, from inside out. Where to start? At the top, of course. Receive bless I had to receive blessings from my elders. Elders are old men in my community. They are the ones who make decisions. So you, have, you first have to pass, you first have to go to them and then they give you blessings. Not yet, they are known not to listen to women, but they could listen to me nice. Talking to, I had to also to talk with mothers and girls. Uh, it's hard for you to get them each day, so I used to look for them during the market days so that I could get a, new no a good number. I used to talk with them on the importance of family planning, importance of delivering in the hospitals, and also importance of immunization to the your kids. We introduced something new that we thought it's good than doing the female genital cutting. That's alternative rite of passage. That's women becoming, girls becoming women without the cutting. After that, we also had to talk on such things like sexuality and health education. We have a group of uh, girls from my community so we, 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 we started a CBO, a community-based organization, uh, and we are 20. So the, ma the, main, uh, the main aim of the, uh, of the organization is how we could empower other girls from my community like us. And in, in the last three years, we are able to rescue over 150 girls, and now they are in school, and they are, they are not circumcised. Just November, this year, elders and women denounced FGM in my neighboring community. So we can see change is really spreading. It took time for the other group to, to accept me. The other group is it's a special group because they are it, it's hard for us, it's hard for us women to talk with them. Those are Morans. Morans are a group of a group of men who are mid teens and mid twenties who normally their work is to stay in the bush, they protect the community, and also they are the ones who are protecting the, 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 the livestock. And then also, this is the most group that is at risk, because they are allowed to practice, they, they are allowed to, to have multiple partners, so they can have sex with every girl they find in the, in the village, because it's allowed. And then I saw that there is an impo importance of talking to these men because these are these are our future leaders, and they are the ones who are marrying the young girls we are talking with. So we used to talk to them on the importance of condom usage and having uh, HIV test. And then one of the elders told them it's a matter of life and death, so they had to choose it for themselves. Few more joints with Morans and elders. After one year, they accepted me, and I was given a sierra. A sierra is a black walking stick, a black walking stick that symbolizes leadership. Uh, I understand uh, now in my community, the elders and Morans and mothers, we work together to support alternative right of passage. Because for the for the young men, I think it's because they had the rumor that uncut women were more interested in sex, but ignore that for now. My resolve to work hard, harder, lead by example, to be a change agent has been further strengthened by the sudden death of my sister. She died in malaria while spreading, while I was spreading the reproductive health messages to the community and the youth. I'll campaign against malaria in the village for every household to have bed nets and drain stagnant water. Please join me in bringing meaningful change to my people, especially the girl child in Kenya. And I want every woman to be the woman of her dreams. One more last, for, one more last word for you this morning is that uh, you, 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 you need someone's patience for you to make change. Thank you. Whoa.